Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you all a review of the T7 science section. So on my channel, I offer a lot of videos to help you pass your nursing entrance exams and also to pass your prerequisite courses to get into nursing school. Recently, the T's exam was re-updated from the T6 to the T7. So I wanted to re-update my T's videos and give you a little update on how to study best for the T science section. What things should you be focusing on? What are the most important topics for you to be studying so that you can do your very best on the T science section? So let's dive right in. So for the T7 science section, there are going to be 50 questions total. 44 of them are scored and six of them are unscored. The breakdown of those questions are for the anatomy and physiology section, you'll have 18 questions. For biology questions, there will be nine. For chemistry questions, there will be eight. And for scientific method questions, there will be nine. On the T7 science section, there are those four main topic areas, anatomy and physiology, biology, chemistry, and then the scientific method. But what makes it a little bit different from the T6 science section is that the anatomy and physiology questions are reduced and the biology and chemistry questions have been increased. So now you'll have to spend a little bit more time focusing on biology and chemistry areas. As well as on the T7 exam, the topic of life and physical sciences has been completely removed. So now let's jump into a breakdown of all the topics that will be covered on the science section and what specific areas you should be studying for each one of those topics. Let's talk about anatomy and physiology first. So with anatomy and physiology, one of the major things that you'll want to study are the 11 body systems. Let's talk about each one of those systems and specifically what to study for each one. So first of all, let's talk about the respiratory system. So the respiratory system, you'll want to study the structure and the function. So both the anatomy and the physiology. So the respiratory system is function is to bring oxygen, into the body and to expel carbon dioxide from the body. So what you want to study is the anatomy and physiology of the lungs and its structures, so everything inside of the lungs, and then as well as how it interacts with the cardiovascular system, with the heart, and then you'll also want to study the factors that affect the lungs. So the environmental factors, genetic factors, and then pathogenic so sicknesses and disease that can affect your lungs. So all of those things you want to study up on and be very secure on. Now let's move on to the cardiovascular system. So with the cardiovascular system, this is a very, very critical one to understand fully and know very well for the test. The cardiovascular system, which can also be known as the circulatory system, delivers oxygen and nutrients to the cells in the body and it carries away waste products for removal. So it's very important to study up on the anatomy of blood, blood cells, the circulatory system, the heart, and the cardiac cycle. Make sure to study the heart, the valves of the heart, how blood flows through the heart to the lungs and back and then to the body. So the whole circulatory process and then also study up on how to measure a person's cardiovascular function. So through measuring pulse rate and then blood pressure. So understand what that is and how to measure it as well. Moving on to the gastrointestinal system. So this functions to provide the human body with food and with energy to use. You will want to study the structure of course, so all of the organs and tissues that are involved with the digestive process. And also you'll want to study up on the difference between chemical versus mechanical digestion and also study up on the hormones and secretions that are involved in the digestion process and know where they are secreted from and where they are secreted to to be used in digestion. Next, let's talk about the reproductive system. So the reproductive system enables the formation of new individuals. So with this, you'll want to study the male anatomy and the female anatomy and the structures in the body that are used to reproduce. And then also the specific hormones in the male body and in the female body that are involved in the reproductive cycle. Let's move on to the endocrine system. So the endocrine system is the hormone system of the body. So what's a little bit different with the endocrine system is that unlike some other of the major body systems, the parts of the endocrine system are not all joined together as one single unit. The endocrine system has several glands that are in various parts of the body that secrete hormones and then it relies on the bloodstream to deliver those hormones to other tissues in the body. So 
you'll want to know all the different hormones that are secreted by the body, where they are secreted from, and then the target cells that they are being delivered to and what the purpose of those hormones are. Study up on the endocrine system and how it is involved in homeostasis in the body. Study and understand what positive and negative feedback systems are. Study up on positive and negative feedback mechanisms in the body. And then study how the endocrine system is connected with the central nervous system. Moving on to the immune system. So the immune system functions to protect the body from disease. Now, the immune system has first line defenses like the skin and the mucous membranes. And then it also consists of the lymphatic system, which has lymph nodes and lymphatic vessels. And that is a very critical part of the immune system as well. And then the bone marrow is another area that you'll want to study up on because that creates white blood cells that find and destroy pathogens in the body. So study up on all of those different areas. Understand the types of white blood cells involved in the immune process. Study up on the difference between innate and adaptive immune systems. Study the difference between passive and active immunity. And study the relationships between the immune system and the other body systems. Let's move on to the integumentary system. So the integumentary system includes the skin and other structures that help to protect the body's internal environment. So under this, you'll want to study the structure of the skin and how it functions in regulating body temperature and in homeostasis. Now let's talk about the urinary system. So with the urinary system or the renal system removes waste from the human body and it regulates the blood. So with this, you'll want to study up on the kidneys and their function, the ureters, bladder and urethra, so all of that is included in the urinary system. Study the structure and function of each, and then study how it's also related to the cardiovascular system. So moving on to the skeletal system. So the skeletal system supports the body, and it enables movement in conjunction with the muscular system, it protects internal organs, and it generates blood cells. So the skeletal system is divided into two different sections, the axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton. Both of those, you'll want to know what bones are included in the axial skeleton, which bones are included in the appendicular skeleton, and how many bones in each. Then, you'll want to study the five different types of bones and know where there are examples of those different bones in the human body. Study the types of supportive tissue, study types of joints, study the bone composition, and study the function of bones. Also study how the skeletal system is related to the muscular system and how they work together. Now let's move on to the nervous system. So the nervous system is composed of the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. Sometimes you'll see those as abbreviations, CNS and PNS. The central nervous system contains the brain and the spinal cord and the peripheral nervous system contains the nerves and the sensory organs. So you'll want to study the brain anatomy, so the hemispheres and the other parts of the brain, and then also the nerves that come from the spinal cord, so the cranial nerves and spinal nerves that control the somatic and autonomic nervous systems. Then also study the neuron, understand its anatomy and its function in the nervous system. Moving on to the muscular system. So there are three different types of muscle in the human body. Study those three different types the cardiac, smooth, and skeletal muscle. Those three types. Understand them, what their function is, where they are found in the body. Study the structure of the muscle and then how muscle contraction happens. Also, you'll want to study the difference between voluntary and involuntary contraction. So that is a quick rundown of the 11 body systems that you'll want to study up on. Now, before I get into the other topics that are very important to study for the T7 science section, I'd like to tell you about an amazing resource that was extremely helpful to me as I prepared for my nursing entrance exams. If you're looking for some really good study resources, whether that's a book or flashcards or an online resource to help you prepare for your T7 exam, I would highly recommend the Mometrics Online, an amazing resource, and it bundles together pretty much any way of learning that works for you. So they have flashcards to study, they have video lessons, they have lessons you can read, and within each section of the exam, they have every single topic that you need to study with information that you need to know. Everything that you need is right there. And then on top of that, what I personally loved most about the Mometrics online course is that they have a bunch of practice exams, and then they also have 
just tons of practice questions on every single topic that are realistic to the actual TEAS exam and they help you to prepare, they help you to know what you're strong in and then what you're weaker on so that you can really focus on those topics that you're weaker in and that you need to study to get ready for the exam. So I'm gonna be linking the Mometrics online course down below. If you're interested in that, you can check it out there. Now let's jump into the rest of the topics that are super important to study for the T's science section. Next, let's talk about the biology questions. So on the biology section, you'll have nine scored questions. So biology is the study of life. And there are several different levels of biology that you can study from organic molecules that make up cells to the ways that organisms interact with one another. First, you'll want to study some having to do with cellular biology. So cells are the components that make up all living organisms. And you'll want to study the structure of a cell. So this is like the nucleus, cytoplasm, cell membrane, mitochondria, all of the different things that make up animal and plant cells. And plant cells do have three extra components from animal cells, and that's chloroplasts, a cell wall and a permanent vacuoles. So make sure that you understand the difference between animal cells and plant cells and study the structure of both of those cells. Within cellular biology, study cell structure, types of tissues, and the 11 major organ systems of the human body and the parts of a cell. Now next you'll want to study mitosis and meiosis. So meiosis is the process by which cells duplicate themselves. And then meiosis is the process that creates gametes or sex cells for organisms that reproduce sexually. So make sure that you understand the difference between mitosis and meiosis and then the steps of each one of those processes. Next you'll want to study up on infectious diseases. So first you'll want to study microorganisms, understand what they are, where they can be found, and then also understand that some microorganisms are pathogenic, which means that they can cause disease. Specifically within disease, you'll want to study viruses, bacteria, protozoans, fungi, and vectors, which are things like animals or plants or different things that are not pathogenic themselves, but they can spread disease. You'll want to study infectious and non-infectious disease. You'll want to study some of the most common infectious diseases and the microbes that cause them. Understand also how a microscope works and functions. Next, you'll want to study macromolecules. So macromolecules are large molecules that are necessary for life. Major macromolecules that you'll want to study up on are carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Study the structure of each of the macromolecules, how they are synthesized, so how they're built and then how they are broken down and study the function of the macromolecules within a biological system. Next, you'll want to study DNA and chromosomes and you'll also want to study genetics and inheritance. So heredity is how genetic information is passed from parent to child and the genetic information that's passed on is held in the DNA, which is made up of nucleic acids. So it's very important to study the DNA structure, study genes, study dominant and recessive traits, study RNA, study transcription and translation and the difference between those two, study the relationships between chromosomes, genes, RNA and DNA, study genetic mutations, you'll want to study Mendel's laws of inheritance, study genotype and phenotype and what that means and what the difference between them are, study alleles study genetic variation, and then study how to use a Punnett square. So the Punnett square is how to predict the possible outcome of the offspring of two parents. So that is the rundown of the biology section. Now let's move on to what to study for chemistry. So remember for chemistry, you'll have nine scored questions. Study up on atoms. Atoms are made up of three different types of particles, the protons, electrons, and neutrons. So understand atoms and their structure. Study ions, study the basics of the periodic table, study covalent bonds, study ionic bonds. You'll also wanna study different states of matter. The four different main states of matter are solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. You'll want to study the effects of pressure and temperature on a substance, how it can change the state of matter that a substance is in, and study the changes in states of matter. So the freezing and melting points and the boiling and condensation points. As I already mentioned, you'll want to study the 
chemical bonds, so the different types of chemical bonds. You'll also want to study acids and bases. So study the properties of acids and bases. You'll want to study the pH scale, study buffers, and study neutralization reactions. You'll want to understand the basics of the periodic table. You'll also study water and solutions. So a solution is a homogeneous mixture of two substances. Most liquids on earth are solutions and water is the most common solvent. So understand about water and solutions. Study up on the polarity of water. Study concentration and dilution of solutions. So that has to do with molarity, molality, parts per thousand, parts per million, parts per billion, and then study osmosis and diffusion. And then finally, you want to have a good grasp on chemical reactions. So chemical reactions occur when particles collide with each other under the right conditions, and you'll want to study valence electrons, covalent and ionic bonds, chemical reaction equations, how to balance chemical equations. So all of that is important. And then finally, you want to understand the conditions that affect chemical reactions. So whether that's pressure, the concentrations, temperature, catalysts, just understand the different conditions that can affect chemical reactions. Then study chemical equilibria, so endothermic reaction and exothermic reaction. Now finally, we're going to talk about the scientific method questions on the TEAS exam, and these will be nine scored questions that you'll have. These questions are just designed to check out your ability to answer questions and problems using scientific methods and inquiry. So they'll require you to think logically and reasonably and to understand the scientific method and to also use your logic and reason to answer the questions. Most importantly here, you want to understand the scientific method. So it involves the six steps of problem identification, asking questions, hypothesis development, data collection, analysis, and then conclusion. Study each one of these steps. And then on top of this, it's important to understand experiment design how variables and controls work, constants in an experiment, and then how you will plot the results on a graph at the end of the experiment. As you're studying, you also want to study scientific measurement and tools. So understand the standard metric units of measurement and how to accurately measure things. Also, you want to know how to determine the right kind of tool to measure what you're wanting to measure. So if you're measuring something that has volume or is a liquid, or if you're just measuring length, you'll want to know exactly what tool you'd use in that specific instance. You'll also want to study scientific relationships and sequences, scientific reasoning and logic. So study how to draw scientific conclusions, how to find cause and effect relationships, how to evaluate evidence, and then how to make predictions based on the information you have. So that is a rundown of all of the things that you're going to want to study for the TEAS science exam. Now, just a very few quick tips as you're focusing your studies. If you don't have a lot of time to study and prepare for the TEAS exam, I would recommend first studying the anatomy and physiology section because you do have a majority of the questions for anatomy and physiology. And then within anatomy and physiology, I would study the cardiovascular system first and then the respiratory system. And then from there, work through whatever systems you feel least confident in and then to most confident in. As a general rule, as you're focusing your studies, I would recommend first taking a practice test. And from that practice test, you can see how you scored on each section and you can see specifically which areas you are strongest in and then which areas you're weakest in. Focus your studies mostly on the areas that you're weakest in so that you can really increase those areas. And then if you have extra time at the end, then you can spend some study time on the areas that you're stronger in that maybe you can continue to improve a little bit more. And below I'll be linking the online course that I recommend from Mometrics as well as some free study resources online that I have found very helpful in preparing for the T7 exam. I hope that that was helpful for you today. If you enjoyed this video, you can go ahead and like down below and you can also subscribe to this channel for weekly videos on how to prepare for your nursing entrance exams and how to get into the nursing school of your choice. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.